Hi there, Cold Warrior 78 here again. Uh, I wanted to do a quick video on a uh, water, uh, actually a rain barrel system that I've been working on, uh, and a couple of things that I started early on to test a couple of concepts, see how they worked. Uh, they worked some well, some not so well, uh, and I'll show you what we did. Uh, but let's start here where they, we have some success first. So what you see in front of you now is a watering system for my chickens. Those two little red cup things here, these are the actual waterers. I'll get you close up of those in a minute. I got those from Tractor Supply. Uh, standard blue 55 gallon drum, <clears throat> some three quarter inch plumbing. And I'll show you how all that's put together in a minute. Uh, there's a little bit of a close-up of those two little cups. What I was trying to do was create a rainwater catchment system. Let me pan up to show you where that is. Okay, you can see the bottom end of the gutter. Put my big old finger in here. That's the bottom end of the gutter. That's a two inch pipe going into the top of the rain barrel. And then of course the pitch five gallon rain barrel. It's on a very sturdy platform. One of the things that I notice with uh, people that are making uh, these platforms is they don't make them big enough. Uh, the barrel had a label on it. Uh, what was originally in it was 500 and something pounds. If you have pure water in it, it's still more than 400 pounds. So uh, I made that particular platform out of landscaping timbers. It's sitting on ground which has been tamped down with a sledgehammer. Uh, so it's as sturdy as I can get it, uh, shy of actually pouring a concrete footing, which I actually considered because when you start dealing with that kind of weight, <clears throat> you do not want it to shift. Uh, as you can see coming out of again with the old big finger in here uh, coming out of the barrel I had to put a bulkhead fitting in there uh, those of you who have seen rainwater systems before that black that black donut looking thing there that's the that's the bulkhead fitting I got that attractor supply thought I was gonna have to get it on the internet somewhere and when I looked on the internet, it had said my local tractor supply had them, so I went and got one. Uh, they had them in two sizes. That was an inch and a quarter. Um, I probably could have gone with the three-quarter inch, but I wanted to make sure I had plenty of water flow. Uh, coming outbound from there, there's a couple of fittings to bring it down to three-quarter inch size, which is a PVC pipe I'm using. Uh, and then you see here is... A valve. It's just a ball valve. It's a shutoff. I think any system that's got water coming in either from a pipe, uh, you know, your main supply, uh, or whether it's coming out of a, a barrel or a bucket needs to have a valve because you can't work on the system if you don't have a way to shut off the water. Otherwise, you're going to drain the valves. I've seen several people with systems that have 10, 15, 20 barrels, but there are no valves. If anything happens anywhere in that system, you're going to have to drain that entire system. Uh, and that's not something I wanted to do. And then just a simple, uh, you can see the purple primer there, a simple right angle bend, and those two cups that I got from Home Depot, uh, I'm sorry, from Tractor Supply. Now, th this is a really cool deal. The way those cups work, you can see the yellow, um, that little yellow piece of plastic in there, that's a spring-loaded valve. So when the chickens Oops, I'm sorry. When the chickens peck at that little plastic valve, it puts more water in there. So, right now they're full because they were just in here playing with it. But every time you hit that valve, you get more water in it. It's not designed for a pressure system. It's designed for some sort of storage system, a bucket, a barrel, something like this. Now, I left plenty of room on here. It said that each one can serve as 12 chickens. Uh, in my experience, chickens are kind of pissy about sharing space, so I made sure that I had plenty of room on that pipe 
to uh, put more of those little red cups if I thought I needed to later on. And I've got room for probably another, at least another pair, probably another two pair if I wanted to go that far. All right, so that's the success that I wanted to start talking about. It's also another good view of the, uh, the structure. We've got landscaping timbers flat on the ground. That's the one that's going backwards to the other ones that are on the ground. There's an upright. Uh, and then the platform on top. Uh, you, you almost cannot over design a platform for a water storage system because these things are immensely heavy. And you do not want them to wander. You don't want them to fall. You don't want them to sink into the ground. You don't want them to do anything except sit right where you put them. So take the time to build a good foundation tamp the ground underneath it give yourself a that's not just a single timber there's a multiple timbers going across back in there um, so give yourself plenty of bearing space make sure the ground is tamped down before you put anything on it and then make sure that your uprights are always braced so it can't wobble back and forth um, just you know build it solid uh, if that thing comes crashing down on somebody somebody's going to get hurt all right uh, the one thing I did not do, and those of you who have, have looked at rain catchment systems before will notice at the moment I have a straight pipe coming down from the gutter. Uh, my intent is to put some sort of first flush device. For those of you who aren't familiar with that, that's an extra pipe that typically goes out the side or out the back that catches the initial rainwater, flushes the system because the stuff that comes off your uh, roof initially has all kinds of crap in it. You don't want the chickens to eat or drink all that. Um, I'm still designing that, so I left space in here. That's almost uh, about nine inches uh, that I've got room to put something in there once I figure out what that something's going to be. But I needed to get the system online and working uh, so that I could get the chickens plenty of water. Uh, I don't know what it is about chickens. I don't know if they puke in their water, but they, they just make a terrible mess uh, of the galvanized water that we used to use. So that's the success. Now let me show you where we started a while back. All right, so this, were, this was my initial rain catchment system where I was using uh, just a couple barrels in a couple of different uh, modes to test some concepts because uh, as much as I like watching YouTube videos, I don't trust anything until I've done it myself anyway. So behind me are my first three storage barrels. Uh, you can tell that they're just the blue 55 gallon drums sitting on edge. Uh, in each one of them, let me get a closer view of this. So in each one of them, uh, I have the, uh, one of these bungs is always, at least the ones that I found, uh, are always tapped for a three quarter inch pipe thread. So I've got a three quarter inch piece of PVC in here, comes out to a connector. I wanted to have a valve on each one of my uh, barrels, uh, and as you can see, I do. The uh, the valves the uh, I have on the chickens water system, uh, those are like three and a half, three and a quarter, and change depending on the size that you get. Uh, this is simply a an angled uh, valve for a water hose. The kind of thing that you would have on your sprayer or um, if you had you know I don't know sprinklers or whatever um, but it's got a little ball valve in here okay uh, with a lever simple shut on shut off uh, this is a three-quarter inch not pipe thread adapter but a uh, hose fitting all right so you can actually move that back and forth so it's in kind of backwards from the way you would normally see it but now I have a valve on each of the tanks so I can control the tanks individually. And that wound up being a really good idea because, um, don't you see, you can see how the barrel's kind of slumped in there, the one on the top. When I originally built this, my thought was when I get those things filled, they will act like a cylinder, like a solid cylinder. The water will support itself you know, all that kind of stuff. And so if I left some space in here, they'd be more sturdy. Uh, the wind wouldn't blow them off. There wouldn't be any kind, I mean, we don't get seismic issues here anyway. 
but uh, uh, you know it just be, it'd be more sturdy and uh, less prone to issues. Uh, I also just uh, pumped into a couple of vertical barrels that they just capped off. Um, the uh, foundation, as you can see, those are six by sixes down here on top of a concrete retaining wall. Uh, landscaping timbers with just some some things that uses spacers at the moment and I thought that was going to be a good idea uh, let me show you on the back side why that's not a good idea I think you can see from this angle the uh, the deformation of the barrels they actually flattened out and started to squeeze into one another all right uh, it's not as bad now because I've, I've drained this top barrel so that's now empty I can pick that up but I think as you come in, well, let's see here. Okay, not quite as drained as, <laughs> as I thought it was. Uh, but you can see there, it's flattening out in here. That's not a good idea. You deform the plastic, and pretty soon you're going to have an issue. I also intentionally sloped them down a little bit to the back for stability. Um, when you get down to the end of those barrels, particularly once you add a little deformation to that thing, uh, <clears throat> there was, I don't know, 20 gallons or more of water <laughs> that wouldn't come out of it. I had to literally put a jack, a hydraulic jack in there and, and boost up the back end of the barrel. Okay, so you're saying, <clears throat> Ron, I get this. Uh, that didn't work. The other one that I have is, is vertical with a uh, uh, a bulkhead fitting on it. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Uh, first off, it to some extent depends on the kind of barrels you can get. The barrel that I have out back where the chickens are uh, is the type that has a steel band around it uh, and you, you can take the entire top off of it so you can reach inside. Uh, I haven't wanted to just saw the top of these things off yet. Uh, and make an open bucket. Uh, to me, I, that just sounds like you're buying into more troubles. I live in the southeast. Mosquitoes are a problem, and even leaving a three-quarter inch hole in these things uh, did not solve the mosquito problem. I didn't really figure it would, but I gave it a shot anyway. Uh, in fact, behind me, you can see these uh, barrels. The top bung has a small hole in them. Some of them are a quarter inch. Some of them are uh, as big as three-quarters. I was just experimenting to see what worked. Uh, basically, if there's a hole, a mosquito will get in it. Kind of figured that, but, you know, tried it anyway. So, what am I going to do? You know, what's the right answer? Well, I don't think there is a right answer for everyone's, you know, one right answer for everyone's situation. That's why there's so much creativity out there. I think what I'm going to try next is move these guys closer together, eliminate that space in here, so that they're, they're literally edge to edge, and uh, make it truly horizontal so I can drain everything out of them. Uh, they're not, stability is not the issue that I thought it was. I do like the way the landscaping timbers supported the edges of these. Uh, there is a, a little bit of definition, or I'm sorry, deformation right in here. And that's simply because I didn't measure it right. Uh, I think if I take that edge off, uh, smooth it out a little bit more, it'll uh, support better and then uh, stack them horizontally. I think I'll, I'll probably continue to stack a second row on top of the first row, but once I get them together, I don't think I'm going to have that deformation problem. Um, I may not, if I have enough room, the first row may just wind up being five or six of them just flat straight across. Um, now, uh, I know a lot of you are saying it's a rain catchment system. Where's the rain coming from? Because all I see are barrels. Uh, in my case, I put my barrels up next to where my garden is. Part of my garden is over here. You can see the back of it right in here. Uh, I've got some tomatoes growing and some other things. And uh, the other part of my garden is literally where I'm standing. It's directly below me. Uh, because I live on a hill. I live, I live in a river valley. There's no flat ground out here unless I make it flat. So let me turn this around so you can see what we have going on back here.
All right, this is my rain catchment system in its most basic form. <clears throat> As you can see, we have the straight pipe like I have in the back. That's the same fact that I, I prefabbed several of those and I used one in the back. Uh, the 55 gallon bucket that goes straight up into the gutter. Uh, again, I did that right at the end of the season last year, probably late November trying to get a system started so I could test some concepts uh, over the winter time and see how bad things would get. Quite frankly, um, as much as I want to put in a first flush system, I haven't noticed the quality of the water being that bad, quite frankly. So while I'm, I'm still looking into doing that, uh, if I don't ever put one in there, I still have water. Uh, it's for the garden anyway, so I'm not really worried about it. Uh, as you can see, there is a, uh, a valve, it's not a valve really, it's just the cover, that second bung hole right over here. That has a three quarter inch uh, pipe adapter in it. And the reason why we did that is for overflow. Uh, I knew that at some point the water was going to come out of there. And rather than have it come out at that joint between the gutter uh, and the pipe, which it certainly can, it's not sealed, it's just a... a friction fitting uh, but I wanted the water to come out down here and get a pipe on that and put it out uh, haven't been successful in getting that engineered yet quite frankly I've had too many other things going on uh, this is one of those things where you do what you can when you can uh, you'll notice that on this particular barrel I have it strapped okay that red that red line there is a big heavy ratchet strap I have it strapped to the post of the porch Okay, I know that goes that big six by six goes down two feet in the ground in concrete. So if I strap the bucket to the barrel to it, it's not going anywhere. And then you can see down here where I've leveled it out. Uh, to to make this permanent, I need to take that out, dig it flat, put in some concrete or some uh, crushed rock, tamp it down good and solid, and then put that thing back in. Again, this was a temporary. Uh, see how it works kind of operation. And I've only got three of these barrels at the moment. Now how do I get this out of here? Because I've got one downhill beyond there and I've got one over to this side that takes care of two-thirds of my roof, something like that. Uh, certainly not all the roof. But how do I get it, the water from there uphill? Kind of see some of the hill we're dealing with here up to these guys and what I have is a battery powered pump turn this around so we can talk again all right a battery powered pump now this is not an, a, a, a perfect system by any means and it's not the right system for a lot of people uh, but because I have to store my water higher than where it's collected uh, that's the only thing I could come up with. So the arrangement I've got, and I'll, I'll go through that in a separate video, is a 12-volt uh, a transfer pump. I uh, got it from uh, Tractor Supply. Uh, they're 35, 40 bucks, something like that. Uh, that has two hose fittings on it. Short hose goes into the storage system where the rain catchment is. Long, just a regular garden hose comes up here to these guys. Hose goes in the top. Hook it to a battery, you fill the thing up, uh, and then I charge the battery with a solar panel. Last year when I was started this project, um, I was concerned about buying batteries. I mean, that can be very expensive as if you guys have looked into that, you know. Um, so I actually started doing this with a, an alarm battery, one of those like that wide, you know, that long kind of things. I had a seven amp hour, a little bitty sucker. And it actually had enough power to drain one of the the 55 gallon bucket or barrel behind me and and transfer it all into one of the storage barrels up here i was pretty impressed with that because again this battery is like if you have an alarm system you got one of these things in the box in your basement or wherever that thing is the whole battery weighed like a pound it's a tiny little thing this year i have upgraded to a uh, u1r which is a like a lawnmower size battery it's a, still a 12 volter uh, but it's like, you know, it's not a car battery size, but it's, it looks like a car battery, but it's smaller. 
and I'm using that because there's a lot more power in it. I can actually empty three barrels at the same time. When I get into the system, I'll show you how that works. The solar panel that I had last year only worked a little bit. I was using a couple of those little bitty chargers uh, that you get for like keeping your car uh, uh, tweaked up. And they, they were okay, but they didn't really do a very good job, but it was a small battery anyway, so it worked. Uh, with a bigger battery, I had to get a bigger panel. Uh, like I said, that'll be on a different uh, video. So anyway, um, that's what I wanted to show you. We're, we're in, always in a state of process. We're always working on doing something a little bit better, a little bit bigger, uh, fixing a problem that we did in the first place. So, uh, you know, you don't, you're not going to get it right the first time all the time. That's okay. Uh, it's better to get out and do something, even if it's a little bit wrong, as long as you do it safely, uh, and then you learn. So this is Cold Warrior 78 saying, hey, get back out in the woods. I'm working and I'm in the woods.